morning and, and welcome members to the digital meeting of Cabinet held Wednesday 9th of March 2022. As you know, the meeting will be recorded and made available to view on the Council's website. Um, do we have any apologies in addition to the ones that have been indicated in the chat? We don't know. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nadia. OK, I'll go to declarations of interest now. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on the agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Does anyone have anything to declare? No hands have gone up, so there'll be nothing there to declare. Um, we have a set of minutes uh, from Cabinet held on the 23rd of February to approve. I'll go through in terms of accuracy then, if anyone can indicate if there are any amendments needed. So page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, sorry, page six, page seven and page eight. OK, everyone's content with those. If I can have a mover, please, and then. I can have a mover. Yeah, I move. I'll move. Thank you. I'll second. Thanks, thanks Councillor Whitcomb. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Um, if I can have a show of hands then to approve those, please. Thank you all. Thank you very much for that. OK, um, obviously, item four is our standard uh, item on the agenda is to note the Cabinet Forward Work Programme. Um, can I just get a show of hands that you're content with those and if, if there are any amendments needed? No, everyone's happy? No amendments? Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. OK, so the first item on the agenda proper is to receive and consider the following reports and uh, on which we need to make a decision today, and that's the Community Learning Support Hub, Support Hub in Rumley Library. If I can hand over to Councillor Whiting, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Um, this report seeks Cabinet approval for match funding for an application submitted to the Welsh Government Transformation Capital Grants Programme to create an exciting and much needed learning and community hub at Rumley Town Library. It's also intended that the library service will work with Gwent Police to strengthen community engagement through the use of informal settings such as Rumley Library, Risker Library and Cuffilly Library. Cabinet will see throughout the report that this project includes the preservation and display of the Idris Davis collection, a redesigned layout to both floors, upgraded lift, meeting spaces, community rooms, digital training and video conferencing facilities, Wi-Fi upgrade, public laptop lounge, a new children's space, Welsh language collection space, access to multiple council services, um, space for partner agency use, including Gwent Police, refreshments and improvements to the council's carbon neutrality aims, including the installation of an electric vehicle charging points in the car park. To fund these proposals, 18K has been allocated from the library service budgets towards the residual funding requirement of £127,000. And Cabinet is asked to approve a further allocation of £109,000 to be funded from the council's place shaping earmark reserved. I'm more than happy to move the recommendations contained under 3.1 that Cabinet agree the allocation of 109k from the Council's place shape and earmark reserved to uh, ensure that the scheme can progress, subject to confirmation of Welsh Government funding which is expected during the week commencing 21st of March 2022. And under 3.2 to note the intention of the Library Service to work with Gwent Police to strengthen community engagement through the use of informal settings at Rumley Library, Risker Library and Caffili Library. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whiting. If I could bring in Councillor Stenner, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Uh, delighted to second this report. Uh, this investment into a community learning and support hub, hub at Rumney Library, you know, it's very much needed and I'm sure it'll be welcomed by residents. Uh, I'm also pleased to ensure um, that, that, that sufficient funding is available for the hub to be set up, that the £109,000 from the Council's Play Shaping Earmark Reserve uh, is there, 
Uh, and I also note that 5.7 of the report, Gwent Police are seeking to utilise the hub. This uh, will strengthen links within the community and also other stakeholders, and it's going to be an asset to the north of the borough. So happy to second. Thank you ever so much, Councillor Stenner. Um, absolutely. Uh, and I think, you know, that the nod to the partnership working here is really key, isn't it? You know, in the way that we want to move forward in utilising these buildings. So thank you for that. Um, I know we've got a number of um, colleagues, uh, officers with us today. Is there anything further? I think we've got Sue, Gareth and Kath here. Do they, do they want to add anything further, Sue? Nothing for me, thanks, Leader. Just to reiterate what um, Councillor Stenner and Councillor Whiten has said, it's a really exciting proposal for not only the library service, but I think the wider community. Thanks, Leader. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Sue. Yeah, do we have any questions around that? You know, um, it is a, it is great to see this today again, you know, and the fact that we could, we want to call on the, the um, place making place shaping reserves, you know, in order to match fund this, I think is quite significant. And it also shows our commitment to the to Rumney town itself and what that can do in terms of developing that and utilize that site. So I'm more than happy and very supportive of this approach. So uh, and I'm actually happy that Gwent Police is looking to strengthen our community engagement through the use of Risca Library, Caffili Library and also Rumney. I think this is the way forward in terms of utilising the spaces that we have. But again, to foster that partnership working, because I know that it, it can help uh, with our residents and our communities more broadly. So very much welcome these two uh, recommendations today. Uh, if there are no further comments, then we'll go straight to the vote, um, as I think uh, everyone seems to be quite supportive of this. And please let me know if there's any difficulty in voting. Okay. Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for presenting that for us today. Okay, moving on to item six on the agenda then, that's the Corporate Performance Assessment six month update 2021. If I can hand over to Councillor Stenner, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Before Cabinet this morning is the Corporate Performance Assessment six month update. It covers the period from April 2021 to September 2021. It provides a summary of information and analysis for this period. Each directorate has, has the directorate performance assessment, which details information for each direct, directorate. And these have been presented to each scrutiny committee where they have been scrutinised thoroughly. The information from these are fed into the corporate performance assessment, which we see in front of us this morning. The recommendations are shown at 3.1 of the report, I move. Thank you, Councillor Stenner. If I can go to Councillor Gordon, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Um, this report went to the Policy and Resources Scrutiny Committee on February the 22nd and was debated. And some of the questions which were asked at our meeting were things such as sickness levels, well-being, and the impact of COVID. Uh, so with that, uh, Leader, I will second the recommendations. Thank you ever so much, Councillor Gordon. Thank you very much for that. Um, I know we've got um, the corporate management team with us here today, so I wonder if there's anything further you would like to add to the report before we go to any questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Leader. Uh, what we thought might be helpful is really if each member of the corporate management team just took a few minutes uh, to pull out a particular, particular pertinent points um, for their respective service areas. So that, that won't take us too long. So as long as you're OK with that, um, we'll make a start. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Thanks, Dave. Go ahead. OK, I'm sure my colleagues will have no objection. If I go first, uh, I'll take it on the chin for them. There you go. Um, from a social services and housing point of view, um, you'll see on page 28, uh, big page 28, the areas of interest there. Uh, we, we talked about this is obviously quarter one and quarter two, so it's a little bit out of date now. We talked about our um, progress in terms of WHQS, and obviously that did move on in a satisfactory basis to the extent that we were able to report the completion of WHQS towards the end of December 2021. Uh, we do still have pressures in the system in terms of homelessness uh, and we, we're working quite actively, um, particularly those, those people who are sort of almost presenting themselves as voluntary homeless and doing lots and lots of work with those. 
Uh, also in that section, we reference an amount of 1.4 million that had been sourced by our rent section uh, to help people really meet the cost of living. This is mainly as a result of them being able to access grants and benefits that they were previously unaware, either unaware of or were having problems applying for. Uh, the, the real good news around that is that by the end of that financial year, the 1.4 million has now increased to some three million pounds, which you can imagine is quite significant in helping people and, um, actually be able to deal with the sort of household income pressures that everyone is seeing at the moment. But obviously they are more pertinent uh, to lower income families. Uh, I think perhaps the, the best example I, I had was a family where the rent section were able actually able to gain an additional 16 thousand pounds for that family a year which is obviously life-changing for them in, in terms of the, the the challenges that they face from a social services point of view um, the position has been fairly consistent our, our numbers of referrals and assessments is remaining fairly uh, fairly flat we do have some significant pressures in domiciliary care um, you can see a figure there which talked about 74 people waiting for care packages um, coincidentally, that's about the figure uh, that we face now. We did get, go up to over 100 over Christmas, uh, but it's come back down to 70. And that's really about demand for service versus our ability to recruit and re uh, retain carers. And of course, we're still uh, affected quite significantly by the um, the COVID sickness absences. So we've still got a significant number of people self-isolating albeit for a, a relatively shorter period of time. In terms of children's services, great work that's gone on there. Um, and as I said, our, our referral and assessment rates has remained mainly fairly flat. What has changed in children's services is we are seeing younger people presenting themselves with far more complex needs than has been historically the case. Part of that's been the impact of COVID. You know, schools have been closed. They've been away from their, their peer groups, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we are working. So even though our, our numbers are not going up, uh, the complexity of the cases we're dealing with and indeed the costs associated with those cases um, are, are becoming more and more challenging by the day. So that's it from a social services and housing point of view. Uh, Mark, Ed, I don't know if you want to pick up the mantle. Yeah, happy to go next if that's okay. Okay, uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, I suppose just just in terms of the economy environment directorate, um, although this only covers the first two quarters, you know, it's still it's still a, a period where we were very much in the midst of the COVID pandemic. Um, and just like the place on record, and I'm sure Cabinet will agree with me that, you know, thanks for the efforts of our staff in in seamlessly maintaining our frontline service delivery, you know, whether that's waste collection, highway maintenance, uh, you know, parks, grounds maintenance, building cleaning, you know, the dealing with planning applications, there's a whole whole plethora of services that we've continued to deliver pretty seamlessly. Um, and that hasn't been the case in all authorities across Wales. So a great effort by uh, those staff in terms of, of working through that pandemic and hopefully starting to get back to some more normality now. And also, um, you know, the, the staff that have felt even more pressure yeah, throughout the pandemic are the staff in public protection, environmental health, training standards that have been, you know, at the heart of controlling the pandemic and dealing with enforcement of, of perhaps commercial premises that, that, that haven't been abiding by the rules. So, you know, great, great effort from them as well. Just in terms of um, some, of the, some of the challenges, decarbonisation obviously remains a challenge for us all going forward. Um, even more of a challenge this week, as we've, as we've seen electric, gas, and petrol prices, you know, start to go through the roof. Um, Welsh government targets, and we, we've had some success as an authority in lots of the things we've done so far relating to decarb. You know, whether that's looking at alternative energy supply, um, our rollout of electric vehicle charging infrastructure, and and changing slowly our own fleet across to to ELVs. But there's still a lot to do. Um, so, you know, it remains at the forefront of, of the agenda across the directorate and indeed, you know, ac across the authority, whether that crosses over into housing, you know, schools that we build, whatever it may be. Uh, recruitment and retention remains a challenge for us. That's been a challenge um, throughout the pandemic. It's still a challenge and, you know, 
does potentially have impact as we as we try to roll out our placemaking plan and develop infrastructure, you know, whether that's sort of civil engineering type infrastructure or buildings. Um, we are having trouble recruiting key technical staff um, that are a key element in terms of, of progressing development. That's not that's not a, a Caerphilly County Borough issue. That is a is a is a national issue, not just in Wales uh, across the UK. Um, but obviously something that we are we're working through at the minute and um, some of the challenges relating to uh, our our waste targets our waste targets haven't gone as well as as we've done in the past you know largely we've collected significantly more waste arising through covid uh, largely because people have been working from home that's affected our targets but we will have some significant decisions to make moving forward in terms of um, our waste strategy and how we change that and implement that to achieve our future statutory targets. Um, I think those are the, the, the kind of main headlines. Uh, appreciate time is precious, uh, but happy to take any questions. Okay, I think we'll go straight to Ed um, and then we, we can take a, a round of questions after that. Thanks ever so much, Mark. Over to you, Ed. Okay, thanks, Leader, and uh, thanks, uh, Members. Morning. Um, as has been mentioned previously by Mark and Dave, you know, the, the CPA contains a huge amount of information from the first two quarters of the financial year, again, whilst we were in the midst of COVID. So I think it's it's important um, that, that the progress that's been made during that time is kind of noted and recognised. There are some updates in the early part of the CPA that really bring to life a, a huge amount of work and progress against a range of projects and programmes. So um, setting that to one side, focusing in on the areas of interest. First one I'd like to, to draw out really is around the work that began during uh, the back end of quarter one to start developing a revised education strategy. Most of you will be aware one of the first things I did when I joined Caerphilly was working with colleagues and, and members create the shared ambition strategy. Um, that served its purpose, uh, did some, you know, put, put some really fantastic foundations in for the, the education journey that we're on. Incredibly, we gave it a three year lifetime. Um, little did we know at the point we did that, two of those years would be dedicated to COVID. So unsurprisingly, we're, we're starting early that, that the strategy comes to an end in 2022. And we're currently involving quite a number of stakeholders in developing the replacement strategy that takes into consideration the, the impact of, of COVID. So we look forward to sharing that with you in due course. There's references in, in the areas of interest to the significant levels of I think it's, it's worth just referencing the potential challenges or the, the, the actual challenges that our school sites had in terms of uh, COVID uh, and the high levels of sickness absence that they were dealing with, as well as pupil absence. Great to report that during that time, we had very, very few class closures and even less, if any, school closures. So a huge effort from head teachers, uh, the school communities and the LEA staff to keep things ticking over against some very, very challenging circumstances. During that time, Cabinet will also remember that we agreed an inclusion compendium, which is focusing heavily in on the impact of exclusions. I think it's fair to say, talking to head teachers at the moment, um, there are a handful of pupils across our, our education estate who really are struggling to adjust to life after COVID, if that's even a thing at this point. So we've got some specific work to do there, and that inclusion strategy will no doubt help us um, make sure that our learners are, are engaging and getting the right experiences again as soon as possible. Um, it's pertinent because we were a few of us were up there. Uh, when was it last week? Um, the investment in the uh, athletics hub at Rusa David Primary, joint venture between the education estate and our colleagues from Sport and Leisure. Um, I have to say, uh, absolutely incredible facility and a, a great day for us to be up there to officially open it. And I've seen some some cracking um, activity on Twitter over the weekend about uh, further further things going on to celebrate that opening. So, you know, a, a really, a really interesting and uh, exciting opportunity, particularly attached to, to that primary school. Fantastic facility. You'll also recognise that um, libraries were reopened in April 2021. And, and whilst we're continuing to see numbers of service users returning increasing, I think it's also worth recognising that the number of uh, residents that were 
participating in both the e-loans and the click and collect service throughout COVID um, has, has risen exponentially and we're, we're holding on to those uh, to those numbers now. So some good work there done by libraries and of course you'll also appreciate that our library staff have, have been many things to many people throughout the course of the pandemic. They've been a, a cracking bunch in terms of what they provided in the, in the widest sense of, of service delivery. There's also reference here to the um, the, the targets and performance against freedom of information. Um, you'll appreciate that we have, have improved our response to those FOI requests over quarter one and quarter two, but we're still a little bit uh, below the target. You'll also recognise that at uh, the recent Budget Council, um, Council approved two additional members of staff to go into that team, so I would uh, expect those targets now to um, to, to, to be uh, surpassed in the, the coming weeks and months. So thank you to, uh, to Council for that. Um, the other bit I just wanted to touch on then around recruitment and retention, it was raised by Councillor Gordon um, and referenced at PNR. Uh, Mark also touched on the, the challenges we've got in terms of recruitment. Th there are some specific challenges in this area. There are a number, probably an increasing number of critical posts that we are finding it quite challenging to recruit into. Um, just for, for members' info, we're, we're bringing a report to PNR early in April, which sets out those challenges in, in some detail also reflects on the things we've done to try and overcome them to date and then put some short, medium and long term plans in place to address those issues uh, over the extended time frame ahead. The reason this is linked to sickness, of course, is because where we have got some challenges in recruiting the critical posts, the workload that is then picked up by the staff that are employed um, does become uh, somewhat taxing over time. So, so there's a lot of work for us to do to identify the reasons why these critical posts can't be um, can't be recruited into, get people into those posts, start to share that workload out a little more so that we're able to progress um, what appears to be a, a huge amount of work that's with us at the moment and coming down the track. So I think that's probably enough from me, Leader. Thanks. Thanks ever so much, Ed, and thank you both to Dave and Mark as well for the overviews of each of your directorates. Really helpful, and I think just picking up some of the, the, the you know, some of the elements in there is startling, isn't it? And I think for me, that three million comments, you know, that you know, in terms of um, increased revenue and benefits to our residents, cannot go unnoticed. That is absolutely amazing, you know, and it does make me feel very relieved that people have been supported. I'm getting a bit emotional now. But it's important, isn't it, to recognise that people are supported. And, um, you know, can I again put on record my thanks to everyone that's worked in that area, because that signposting and assisting, particularly in that benefit application form or of any kind, can be daunting for some. And I think if we're absolutely, you know, um, supporting people to get access to that, I'm really proud of this authority for doing that. I really am, you know, I'm absolutely welcome our Kavili Cares model in that regard, because I think this is a shining light for us as an authority. Um, again, I try not to get too emotional about that. Um, you know, I just want to touch on the recruitment and retention that you all alluded to. We know that is a challenge um, Wales-wide, UK-wide, you know, particularly in public service. And, and it's in all areas. It's at every level. It is, you know, uh, a concern I know of mine, and I've raised this with Welsh Government directly, you know, and with my workforce spokesperson hat on, I've raised that in terms of well-being, etc., in terms of individuals as well that you know in terms of employees so it's something and i welcome the fact that you've just um, given us the date there ed in terms of that report coming through because it's something it's an acknowledgement from welsh government the need to look at all of that you know going forward and how we recruit and retain in you know in in, in the light of a one public service really i think that is kind of where we need to and where we need to be that's an aside but um and, and i just want to say thank you as also uh, mark in terms of the frontline service cost, uh, uh, comment, absolutely. I think we again, the cabinet and myself would absolutely you know, put on record our thanks again through that very difficult period of time where you know nothing was uh, stopped and everything continued. Again, in a backdrop of quite difficult circumstances, uh, you know, around sickness, recruitment, retention, and all of that. So again, thank you to all of those. Um, um, and I, I just want to touch on really the shared ambition strategy. You know, that seemed a long time ago now <laughs> and where we've come from in there and absolutely value developing that out going forward because I know also Welsh Government are looking at works in terms of the impact of COVID on all our pupils and their learning. And, um, you know, so the fact that our inclusion compendium has picked up on that, and you know, and recognises the challenges that we've got 
for some individuals. So, um, you know, really good to see these. I know they've been heavily scrutinised as they've gone through the scrutiny process, which is really important. But, you know, to have this this level of monitoring from the CPA and, and you know, uh, is really, really important that we're able to demonstrate progression, uh, you know, where we've achieved things, where we may not have quite got there, but, you know, what's there to wrap around to in, ensure that we achieve is really important and maybe it sends a message out to say you know we do we're working to the best of our ability to achieve on behalf of all residents you know and i think this monitoring system that we've got in place now and the six monthly reporting the quarterly reporting is fantastic you know and i'm really glad to be able to say that we've got this in place and, and it's given us what we need so i'm talking too much here so i'm going to invite any comments or any questions from cabinet members Okay, maybe I've talked a little bit too much, um, but um, anyway, okay, thank you again and thanks uh, to all uh, Ed, Dave and Mark for, you know, coming in on that because I think it's uh, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, without further ado then, um, I will go to the votes. Waiting for them all to come through. Have you all managed to do it? Okay. Okay. I'm only seeing seven votes in at the moment. No, it's eight. Thank you. We're here. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. I think my system's a bit slow, and we know who to blame for that. Okay. Okay, next item is item seven, the Strategic Equality Plan Annual Report 2020-2021. If I can hand back to Councillor Stenner, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. The Strategic Equality Plan 2020 to 2024 has been developed to demonstrate the Council's commitment to meeting the Equality Act 2010, Regulations 2011. It highlights links to legislation and regulations covering the Welsh language standards and human rights issues and how it supports four of the seven aims of Welsh Government. Welsh Government's Wellbeing of Future Generations Act 2015. It also outlines how the Council will meet its responsibilities under the public sector's equality duty to advance equality and inclusion for all protected groups. Under the Equalities Act 2010, the Council has a statutory duty to produce an annual uh, report on the steps it has taken to meet the public sector's equality duty and its own equality objectives are set out in the Strategic Equality Plan 2020-24. The requirements are very detailed to what relevant information must be included in the annual report. The full report is included as Appendix A. The annual report is also required in order to ensure that the Equality and Human Rights Commission, as the regulatory bodies involved, are provided with full evidence of the Council's compliance and commitment to those statutory duties. The annual report must be published by the 31st of March the following year. The report highlights the Council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic and how we helped our vulnerable residents via the Buddy Scheme and delivery of key services such as social services, housing, childcare hubs, free school meal deliveries, distant learning and efforts made to protect the local economy. As you know, during the 2020-2021, we developed, approved and published our new strategic equality plan, plan 2020 to 2024 and a new inter integrated impact assessment toolkit in light of the new requirement to consider the socio-economic duty in strategic de decisions, which came into effect from the 1st of March 2021. The report gives an overview of consultation and engagement exercises we undertook during 2020-21, which was a challenge in you due to the pandemic and required us to find other methods of communicating messages and engaging with people. 
We also celebrated and marked some significant annual calendar dates and used them as opportunities to raise awareness, educate, celebrate and remember. The recommendation is for Cabinet to approve the annual monitoring and improvement report for publication on the Council's website by the 31st of March deadline. I move. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stenner. If I can go to Councillor Pritchard now, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. C can I second and can I reserve the opportunity to come back in just after and when I think uh, presents a bit more? OK. Yeah, absolutely. OK, is, is Sue or Anwin going to come in and, and talk to the report? What it are. Um, I've got nothing further to add, um, but I'm happy to take any questions that any member might have on the report. I was on mute then. Thank you, Anwen. Um, again, you know, it's great to see this report and, you know, and, and Councillor Senna just highlighted some of the, the, the days that we've marked, you know, in, in light of this report. And I think it's always good to see that we raise awareness and continual, continually raise awareness. Um, we only had uh, International Women's Day yesterday where there was a big uh, push for a montage of photos, etc. And again, breaking that bias is really, really important. And we do need to make every st um, um, step in that right direction. So I noticed Councillor Stenner, you've got your hand up again. Did you want to come back in? Yeah, thanks, Leda. It's, it's just to say, you know, it's a big thank you to everybody because it, it was such challenging times during 2020, 21. And the consultation part of, of, of anything, it, it, it proved to be so difficult. So it's a thank you to all officers who really thought outside the box to, to carry on with that consultation and engage with as many people and organisations as they could. So it's just a thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Stenner. Absolutely, it wasn't without its challenges, was it? I mean, it was difficult at times, absolutely. OK, I think Councillor Pritchard would like to come in now. Yeah, th th thank, thank you, Leader. And <clears throat> Councillor Sten and yourself have, um, have highlighted a, a few things that I you know, was going to refer to, but I, I don't think we should ever lose sight of the fact that, you know, we should always be strong to promote equality across the board um, as much as we possibly can. And in recognising what Councillor Stenner has said in terms of, um, yes, the pandemic pr proving very uh, difficult, uh, difficult for any council in Wales and across the UK and across, probably across the world as well. Um, but there are a number of things uh, that have, that have um, been uh, mentioned in the report, such as Mental Health Awareness Week. I don't think we should ever lose sight of the fact that um, mental health is an issue that impacts on a significant uh, amount of people. Armed Forces Day, Pride Cymru, Dwyrnod uh, Shumai, Black History Month, White Ribbon Day, Holocaust Memorial Day. Um, International Women's Day yesterday, uh, zero tolerance to racism. Those are a, a number of things that uh, this council has, uh, has championed and I would say, you know, has pushed uh, probably further than, than most councils, if I'm, if, if I'm honest with you. And that's due to the, to the hard work of officers and the, and the cabinet member and, and everybody involved really was taking taken part in uh, in those events. They, they, they're not just uh, events to uh, tick box exercise because we mean what we say. You know, nobody wants to, uh, to have racism in the country. Nobody wants to uh, think uh, anything other than we need to promote uh, mental health. There's two, I'm, and obviously I've named about eight or ten there, but I just wanted to touch on something as well that, that's in the report that I think is quite remarkable, really. Um, so I'll just do a little bit of reading. Um, I know it's in the report and most people have probably read it, but um, in terms of the buddy scheme, over 1,550 vulnerable residents have res uh, responded to the letter uh, that went out, I think, across the, the, the county borough, 76,000 properties, I, I think there were, uh, and 590 members of staff came forward to help, uh, 350 of those volunteering in, in their own time. And obviously the scheme, you know, matched um, those most vulnerable um, to people living in the in the locality. And, and this is a startling statistic I just want to highlight now. So the feedback from the vulnerable residents on the buddy scheme was extremely positive and it is clear that the scheme made a significant difference. Volunteering has also been a rewarding role for those supporting the vulnerable, with 97.3% of those surveyed stating that they found the scheme either a positive or an extremely positive experience. 
I think when you've got satisfaction levels at 97.3%, I think that tells you that um, you know we can be proud of the fact that we have stepped in to support the most vulnerable at the most critical time possible. You know, isolating residents, uh, residents who are unable to leave their homes for, for numerous reasons. And I want to pay credit to um, all of those who were responsible for, for rolling out the buddy scheme and also to all those who took part in supporting the, the vulnerable. It was, it's what makes me proud to be you know, a member of a local authority who's uh, who's looking after the vulnerable. And obviously we've got a succession program uh, going on now. So I just wanted to highlight that. I could have highlighted a number of things, but you know that is something I think that um, is really, really beneficial to residents. And again, I'd like to pay credit to all those who made that happen. Thank you, Leader. No, and I would echo that, Councillor Pritchard, absolutely. And I think, you know, it just highlights our inclusive approach, doesn't it? It absolutely does in terms of that wrapping our arms around it. And I know we described that when we talked about the the, the evolution from the buddy scheme into the Caffili Cares. It was, and that image is about arms wrapping around, isn't it? And that support. So for me, again, you've just highlighted that, you know, that massive inclusive approach that we've got. And that goes across all, you know, all the characteristics as well. You know, in, in helping our residents, so it, it's really important. You know, and I'm proud to be the leader of this authority. I really am, and um, I don't get too emotional again. But you know, but again, the buddy scheme for me was another one, and it was absolutely a, a highlight to to be able to to suggest that. You know, we have that inclusive approach. So thank you for making those comments. Okay, there's no other indications to come in. Um, thank you again, Anwen, uh, for all the work that you do on your team. Um, so I think we're ready to go to the vote now. Wait for that to come through. Thank you, that's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to the next item on the agenda is the five year Welsh language strategy 2022 to 2027. And back over to Councillor Stenna, please. Thank you once again, Leader. The five year Welsh language strategy is a requirement of the Welsh Language Standards 145 and 146 of the Welsh Language Standards No. 1 Regulations 2015. This is the Council's second five-year Welsh Language Strategy. It's, it is a high-level document and the action plan contained within the document clearly demonstrates the Council's commitment to promote the Welsh language facilitate the use of the Welsh language and increase the number of Welsh speakers in the county borough by working in partnership. The strategy sets out actions which are split into six strategic areas, the family, children and young people, communities, Welsh language services, the workplace and infrastructure, which is policy and practices. The strategy was developed in consultation and engagement with key stakeholders, which for reference are listed in the action plan and included and include um, specific council service areas. The full engagement report can be viewed in Appendix C. The current economic climate is challenging and will impact on the delivery of, the of this strategy, and it cannot be delivered by one organisation alone. Therefore, working in partnership with existing partners and forging new opportunities to work in partnership with new organisations from all sectors is vital. It is recognised by all existing partners that the success of the strategy relies very much on working together with all sectors of the community. During a consultation and engagement process to develop the strategy and associated actions, all council service areas were contacted. It is important now that all council service areas take on board the actions in this strategy and work together with us alongside key stakeholders to ensure all citizens can use and engage with the Welsh language naturally every day. The Welsh language must be supported and nurtured in the county borough for generations to come to use and enjoy too. The recommendation is for Cabinet to approve the five year language strategy 2022 to 2027, which will then be published on the Council's website and shared with key stakeholders. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor Spanner. I can hand over to Councillor Whitehead now. Yeah, thank you, Leader. Um, I'm happy to second the recommendations in this report. Um, it's important that we promote the Welsh language to help reach our own and Welsh Government's national targets for increasing the number of Welsh speakers of all ages. And I'm pleased to see the strategy coming through today. Um, I think public bodies have a key role to play in increasing the use of the Welsh language in everyday use. Um, and I feel this also has quite a close relationship to our recently agreed Welsh and education strategic plan as well. So I think there's some good links there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councillor Whitey. Are there any comments? And I'm, I'm absolutely happy to see this report here today. Again, it, it sets out our intent in terms of the uh, Welsh language strategy um, for the borough going forward for the next five years. So I'm more than happy to support this document that we see here today. Uh, if there are no comments, um, I think that it's quite obvious that everyone's in support there. So if we go to the vote. That's unanimous. Thank you so much. And when you um, didn't get any questions this time, but thank you for the report. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda is the development of the multi-purpose visitor centre at Park Penalta. Uh, if I can hand over to Councillor George, please. Thank you, Leader. Uh, the purpose of the report is to seek cabinet approval for the for a multi-purpose visitor centre at Park Conalta by accepting a substitute grant of £903,000 from the Welsh Government. And secondly, to advise Cabinet of the current anticipated funding shortfall of the scheme and to recommend that this be funded from the capital projects budget. In summary, it, is, it has been a long-term ambition of the Council to establish a visitor centre at Park Conalta. Public support for this development has increased as a consequence of COVID-19, with Park Penalta and all our country parks seeing an increase in use by locals and visitors alike, demonstrating the need for a multi-purpose visitor centre at this location. The project has always been an ambitious one, which would, would act as a flagship for the local authority park initiative. However, however, as a consequence of the design concepts, its construction techniques of delivery and the complex supply chain, it was expected to come in at a premium. However, this ambition cost implication so was not implication. Sorry, excuse me. The cost implications associated with the pandemic and Brexit were not anticipated. The Welsh Government officers have continued to support the project by offering Caffili a substitution grant to the sum of £903,000. The project was tendered some seven months ago and the lowest return tender came in at over £2 million. However, this, this tender process has now expired and we will need to retender again. Officers are working to, sub to secure additional funding based upon the last the last tender exercise with a project cost of two thousand one hundred and thirty seven thousand pounds there is a shortfall of one million and seventy eight thousand pounds as the current secured grants and reserved countryside capital allocations amounts to one one million and fifty nine thousand funding shortfall talking one million 268,000, including a 10% contingency of 190,000 needs to be secured for the scheme to progress. Moving to the recommendations, I'd like to move that the Cabinet accepts a substitute grant offered by the Welsh Government for the sum of 903,000 and to deliver the multi-purpose visitor, visitor centre for the financial years 200 and 2022 and 2023. And secondly, the grants, the grant of a cabinet approved set, set aside 1,268,000 from the corporate project capital budget in order to ensure the delivery of the project subject to a detailed terms of the grant variation letter from the Welsh Government. Uh, 
if there's any questions, the relevant office is here to answer them. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor George. If I can go to Councillor Whitcomb, please. Thank you, Leader. I'm, I'm more than happy to second the recommendations of 3.1 and 3.2. This is a significant investment in our, our outdoor leisure centres, which have all seen a, a, a growth because of the pandemic. And obviously, the, if we've centred the construction of, of, of the centre on, on the site for the most sustainable methodology, we can also set an example in, in reducing carbon emissions by the construction of, of the building. It, it's a, a terrific op opportunity to expand the visitor facility at, at the park and encourage more people to take, take part in outdoor activities in, in, in less, to be quite frank, in our beautiful countryside. I therefore second. Thank you, Lida. Thank you so much, uh, Councillor Whitcomb. And also thank you for highlighting some of those key points there uh, about uh, the reference to the leisure centres without roofs, because absolutely throughout the pandemic, people have used and utilised our um, country parks um, you know, on a, on a great scale, you know, and we've seen the, the usage of these parks rise. So I think to have a, a fit for purpose um, offering at these locations is key for us. You know, it helps promote tourism in the area, but it helps promote well-being, etc. You know, and a whole host of other things as well. And the fact that you alluded to the decarb element of that, you know, and I think it's the way, right way forward. I know this has been a long time coming and it's been a difficult uh, project to bring to this point. Uh, because of the, the way the tender process happened and, and the significant cost associated with that. Um, I, I'm just conscious that before I go to you, Councillor Pritchard, I know Rob Hart, Sean is here. I don't know whether you want to add anything further to the report or if there's anything you need to highlight to members. Uh, th thank you, Leader, and thank you to Councillor George for introducing this item. So as, as he highlighted, this is an ambitious project, a long-standing uh, aspiration, and actually the you know, the reasons and motivations behind that having have increased rather than diminished for the reasons that have been said. I'm joined by Phil Griffiths, our countryside manager, and by Dewey Thomas from our countryside team. It's to their credit, really, and, uh, and thanks to their tenacity that this uh, project is still on the agenda. And between us, we're happy to answer any questions that members may have. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Yeah, it was remiss of me not to mention Phil and Dewey in terms of the hard work and commitment. And I know I've had many meetings with them uh, to discuss this, you know, and my support for this project. So absolutely. Councillor Pritchard. Yeah, thank, thank you, Leader. It just comments in terms of what, what you've actually just, just said in terms of promoting tourism and promoting well-being. Now, you know, I've been to Penalta uh, Park, um, you know, many times now, and it's, you know, it, it's a great place to visit, to walk around the field, but the, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very big open space. And, you know, when we can encourage people to, uh, you know, you, you know, to go to open spaces such as um, Penalta Park, I think that's a positive, you know, not just for well-being, for health and fitness and, and everything else and tourism, as you as, as you said, leader. So I'm very happy to support this and I look forward to uh, visiting the visitor centre when it's uh, when it comes about. Thank you, leader. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Pritchard. And I think also just on that, you know, and, and in terms of I remember having a conversation, I think it was in the car park um, a long time ago with Dewey uh, around this in, in terms of that offering for agile working. So it's, it's, a, it's a way of offering spaces for people to, who are now working in an agile way. And COVID obviously has, uh, has brought about that change in, in work and lifestyle as well. So I think that's important that it could be that type of space as well. I think that'll be really good going forward. Uh, Councillor Stenner. Yeah, I haven't got a question, Lisa, uh, but, you know, this is a very exciting project, uh, which will result hopefully in, in, in a flagship uh, visitor centre uh, at this location. Um, and I just want to thank officers who have put hours and hours of work uh, into this. Not only have they had uh, a global pandemic um, to contend with, but in the report, it mentions the rise in the cost of materials now, no easy feat for anybody to, to come up against uh, something such as this that is totally out of their control, but something that has to be managed. So, you know, it's been probably a one almighty headache for our officers, but, you know, we, we get in there in the end. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Councillor Steiner. Absolutely. And I, I think Rob touched on that in terms of tenacity of certain characters. Um, you know, and I would absolutely, you know, put on record my thanks to both Phil and Dewey as well in that regard. So thank you. 
Okay, uh, there are no other indications to come in on this. Um, I'm more than happy to support this. Uh, the, the recommendations are set out by Councillor George, so if we can go to the vote, please. Just waiting for all the votes to come through. They're through, that's unanimous. Thank you ever so much. And thanks, Rob. Thank you, Phil, and Dewey as well. Okay, we'll go on to the next item. Um, and that's item number 10. That's the regeneration board and the project proposals. So if I can hand back, I, I'm laughing because it is like the Councillor uh, Stenner show today. So hand back over to Councillor Stenner. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. The purpose of this report is for Cabinet to approve two sums of money from the Licence to Innovate funding. Firstly, £24,950 for Caffili Music Service to offer two innovative projects to schools in the borough. Secondly, £16,000 for the Caffili statutory team who are working with digital services to offer IT curbs in two schools as a pilot one in a secondary school and one in a primary school. If approved, um, this will result in a balance of £168,361 in the Licence to Innovate Fund. Also, the allocation of £136,200 from the Regeneration Board Development Budget towards the overall costs of £906,000 to build a fifth unit at TD Employment Park Nelson. Uh, another project has been before the Regeneration Board for funding, but due to its complexity, uh, this will be presented separately to Cabinet. Also due to its commercially sensitive contact, it has been deemed exempt. If these requests are approved, the balance of the fund will be £575,000. The Regeneration Board has cross-party political representation plus key officers. The total amount of funding allocated to the Regeneration Board, including the Licence to Innovate Fund, is £3.75 million. The recommendations are shown at 3.1 of the report and the reason for recommendations are at 4.1 to allow the purchase of equipment for two innovative projects in Caffili Music Service with 50% of the income accrued to be reinvested through the Licence to Innovate Fund as approved by the Regeneration Board and Licence to Innovate Panel. 4.2, to purchase equipment for IT curbs to be rolled out in schools as approved by the Regeneration Board and Licence to Innovate Panel. And 4.3, Welsh European Funding Office and Welsh Government has presented the Council with the opportunity to secure 85% of project funding to build a fifth unit at TD Nelson. However, this will require a match from Caffili County Borough Council of the remaining 15%, which equates to £136,000. I move. Thank you, Councillor Stenner. If I can go to... <clears throat> Councillor Cook, please. Yeah, thank you, Leader. I'm happy to second the recommendations. OK, thank you for that. Um, it's fantastic to see the um, the ask in here in terms of the Licence to Innovate project, in terms of Philly Music Service. I'm really happy to see this. Uh, it's, fa it's fantastic. And also, you touched on the reasons for recommendations there, Councillor Stenner, and I think it's really important to note that, you know, that 50% of the income accrued will be, you know, will be reinvested. I think that's important and it's almost acting like an evergreen fund which i think again is going in the right direction and i'm really happy to see these recommendations you talked about the regeneration project board you know wanting you know to look at an, an additional employment unit vitally important and we know how popular the td nelson site has been in terms of um uh, wanting to, to people to use those units so more than happy to see these two projects coming forward you know, and in terms of the IT cubes, great idea, really good to pilot these things. So fantastic bit of work here in terms of the regeneration board. And I think, you know, these are exactly the sort of projects that we want to see through that license to innovate. So it's fantastic to see these before us today. I've uh, got an uh, indication to come in. Councillor Wick, come please. Thank you. It's, it's, it's not a question, more of a comment about the music service and, and, and the vital role it, it, it provides. Uh, with with young people who may be uh, disenfranchised from school 
and engaging them back into the world of education. And I, I more than welcome the proposal. Thank you, Lida. Yeah, thank you so much, Councillor Whitcomb. A really good point there, you know, and I know how important the Philly Music Service is to many of our pupils, and I think it absolutely helps in terms of our inclusivity. So it's it's really, really good. So fantastic. Um, there are no other indications to come in. Um, I think it's quite straightforward. Um, the recommendations are very clear and set out there. So without further ado, we'll go to the vote. There's always one that's a bit slow. That's unanimous. Thank you ever so much. And thank you again, Councillor Stenner, for that. Um, net, item uh, 11 on the agenda is the public interest head test. Sorry. So if I could hand over to Rob Tranter, please. Yes, uh, thank you, leaders. Um, uh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you, leader. Before you um, consider uh, the next report, members, um, I'd ask you just to consider whether or not um, you will exclude the press or public um, when you consider uh, this report. You will see from my um, public interest test certificate that uh, my recommendation to you is that you do exclude the press and public on the basis that the report contains uh, funding details that at this stage um, are confidential. It is a decision for you though, um, so it's it, it's uh, it's a decision that you, that you need to make. But my me recommendation to you is that you exclude the press and public from the next part um, of the agenda. So when you consider the report, I'm quite happy to take any questions, leader, that you have. Um, my recommendation is to exclude the press and public. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Rob, for highlighting that and going and talking us through uh, your proposal in item 11. Um, um, I think it's quite clear and quite evident why you're proposing that. So um, I, I'm happy to accept that. And should we go to the votes in terms of that? Thank you. That's unanimous, so we've accepted that, Rob. Th thank you, Lady. If you could just give us uh, just a couple of minutes to stop the recording and then uh, we can carry on with the meeting. Thank you, Leader. Thanks. Thank you. 